back to the Seahawks, they tried, as we said earlier, to yeah. make it look like it was going to be amicable. Here's the statement that was issued yesterday by the Seattle Seahawks after thoughtful meetings and careful consideration for the best interest of the franchise. We have amicably agreed with Pete Carroll that his role will evolve from head coach to remain with the organization as an advisor. Pete is the winningest head coach in Seahawks history, brought the city its first Super Bowl title, created a tremendous impact over the past 14 years on the field and the community, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That first paragraph, though, that created an impression that Pete Carroll refuted from the podium at the team facility. And here's here's Carroll from Sunday post game when he was asked whether he wants to return, followed by yesterday his elaboration on what changed between what he said after the season-ending win over the Cardinals and Wednesday when there was an amicable mutual agreement that he was going to pack his stuff and go. Uh, yeah, I, of course, of course I, do, I do. Of course I'd love to do that. I do. I do. I, at this point, I do, yeah. Since our, uh, our last game, um, I had a couple chances to, uh, to talk and... and uh, first, I shared um, my feelings about uh, about our team and uh, about the organization and representing the Twelves and my intentions of staying with the Hawks, man. And that um, that was uh, true to the bone. And uh, I want to make sure that that's that's clear. Following our season-ending meetings uh, with ownership um, in the planning sessions, it's clear that. Uh, and for a variety of reasons, um, we, we have mutually agreed uh, to set a new course and uh, for the club um, to, to take on new leadership. And uh, that's just a decision that's been made. And, and uh, um, there's a lot that went into that and a lot that went behind that. And uh, uh, for all my guys, I, I think you know how, how much I probably competed uh, for our perspective and, and our standpoint and, and, and all of that. I freaking didn't back off for an instant. Well, I, I competed pretty hard to be the coach. Um, just so you know, because I, I just wanted to make sure that I stood up for all of our coaches and the players and the things that we had accomplished. And not, not so that we could be the coach still, but so that we could continue to have a chance to be successful and keep the organization going. That's what I was fighting for. This isn't about me being the head coach. That is, it's about this organization being successful and being uh, on course for the long haul of it as well. And I realize that. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm about as old as you can get in this business. And there's, there's coming a time they got to make some decisions. And so um, moving towards the future, um, if, if there's some way that uh, I can add something to them down the road, we'll see what happens. But um, this is a good move for, for them, and, and John's going to take this thing, take the bull by the horns and, and roll. And uh, I, I, I'm, so, I'm so thankful that I get to see him have, take that next step and, and, uh, and watch what he does with it. He's going to kick butt. Coach, can you be more specific about that decision? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what, what was, no. was there a disagreement? No. <laughs> I can't. I'm not going to. Yeah, look, it's clear. It's clear that he didn't want this. It's clear that, that it wasn't mutual. It was only mutual in the sense that once he's told he's going to leave, there's a mutual agreement that he will. Because what else can you do at that point? You don't own the team. Jody Allen does. When... Any boss, any owner, any executive who's higher than you on the, on the organizational chart says it's time for you to go, it's ultimately a mutual parting because you're not going to be like George Costanza at play now and stay in your office until they physically remove you. <laughs> so he wanted to stay. It's clear he wanted to stay. Yeah. And so good luck. Good luck trying to fashion a narrative. We, we saw it with Jim Harbaugh when they said right after the last game of the 2014 season, mutual parting. He said, they fired me. <laughs> and, and that's what Pete Carroll said in a lot more words with a little more nuance. But when he says, I competed to be the head coach of the team, well, it doesn't mean they had a tug of war or an obstacle course or, you know, a game of horse right. over it. He went into those meetings fighting to stay. And he argued, disagreed right, with the sure. idea that they wanted him to go. He yeah, argued with them. Right. He fought it out. And there's a story to be told here at some point as to how he lost his juice because he was the king. Yeah. He was the king. And every once in a while, you'd, you'd see reports about how there's no one to check him. You know, his sons used to be there. And and I think it was kind of not great when that happened. And they kind of ran the show however they wanted. But somebody at Vulcan, that's the company that holds all of the Paul Allen interests as Jody Allen sells off his estate very, very slowly. Somebody at Vulcan must have decided, we got to get to... Jody and 
we got we got we got to make some changes with this football team. Yeah, we got we got to make. Yeah. And he got he got he got usurped by somebody. And I'd love to know that story. And it's funny because you know he mentioned Johnny. That's John Schneider, the GM, who was hired to basically work for Pete Carroll. Yeah. The end right. result of this is Schneider's not leaving. Yeah. Schneider's going to pick the next coach. Right. Well, I, Schneider, you know, but I think by those comments right there, there's no ill will, right? I don't think Pete Carroll was making those comments. Like, Schneider's not the one of the kind of guys I think would work the back channel to be like, hey, fire him, not me, blah, blah, blah. I, I don't think he'd be like that. Knowing their relationship, knowing John Schneider. I mean, again, I know everybody's out for themselves to a degree, but even with Pete's ca comments there, I think they show you that, you know, Schneider's had his back from the get-go and will oh. till the very end. I think that that's one thing. You know, Pete Carroll, what? Hang what, on. Well, go ahead. What? Uh, well, yeah. well, because we got another clip. You say that Carroll, that, that Schneider's had Carroll's back. Yeah. We know what happens. People go from having their back to, you know, sure. sticking a knife into their back sure. when they get the chance. Right. Let's listen to a little bit more from Pete Carroll okay. before we come to any conclusions as to whether or not there's any friction between him and the guy who was hired to help Pete Carroll find the right players, and he did in John Schneider. Here's Carroll when asked specifically, what will be your role with the team going forward? We're going to figure that out. We don't really know right now. Um, but um, I'm grateful for the, the intention that, you know, that the organization has you know, to try to find something uh, that, that makes sense. Um, you know, so we'll see. How excited are you just to see what John does with this? Oh, no, it's... it's <clears throat> It's why this happened. You want to know? Because I want him to have this chance. It's been 14 years he's been sitting there waiting for his opportunity, and he deserves it. And he's great at what he does. And, and now he's going to go find out. Hopefully I find out, big fella. But, uh, <laughs> but um, and he, he deserves this moment, and, uh, and I was cheerleading for him. And if there's nothing else that w was part of this factor, that was the biggest factor from my point of view. Do you plan on having any input in your successor? Um, no, I have support to, to John. I'm supporting John. The Bears have won, and you guys have got in again. Do you think you'd be in this position? Making them, but not, making them. not today. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I had already seen those okay. clips, so that's what led me to say what I said. Okay, <laughs> so I, okay. I didn't mean All to. Right. Yeah, I didn't mean to. I, I jumped the shark a little bit. I didn't know if we were going to get to them. Right. So that's why yeah. I was saying that I was part of my I was saying what I was saying. Uh, so sorry. I just Go wonder ahead. I yeah. just wonder whether there's a little a little passive aggressive there Whether there's a little, you know, he's going to find out now, you know, like. It, did the call come from inside the house? Was this an effort to unbundle Pete Carroll and John Schneider and let John Schneider take over the football operation? Kind of feels like that to me. Well, yeah, I don't I know. Think Am I so. reading too much into no, it? No, I think I, 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 I think so to a degree, but I don't think it's something where like John Schneider was politicking to try to make this happen and working. It doesn't have that feel. I think Pete Carroll would have been a little more snarky with that conversation that we saw right there. Let alone, I think if it was really kind of bitter and all of that, he wouldn't even think about coming back to help the organization out in some fashion, form, or whatever. It feels. I got the feeling from watching it, you know, last night a little bit that, yeah, the, the things ended between those two on a happy note. And everything I've known, they've been in, been in it together and buddy buddy throughout. So that's that's that would be my take. I could be wrong, certainly. I mean, again, those two have done great things. Pete Carroll, as I said off the start, I mean, legend, legend, Super Bowl and national championships, right? I mean, what he did at Seattle, we can't, like, undervalue that. Clearly the greatest coach in the history of the Seattle so Seahawks organization. In fact, changed the organization around almost like we've seen great franchise quarterbacks change a franchise around, where we've kind of gone, eh, they're not that cool, I don't know, whatever, and he made them cool, and they changed their uniforms, and it was like, man, they're amazing. And then, of course, the, the energy, the style of play, having the guts to bench a veteran that they paid money to put in Russell Wilson. Very Bill Belichick, Tom Brady-like in that way. Hey, mid-round, later-round guy, hey, run my organization. I see something in you. The Legion of Boom, a defense that was like – uh, you know, ahead of its time where football was like, wait, I don't know what the hell this is and what they're doing. I can't figure it out, right? So special, special, like, 
tenure he had there. There's no doubt about that. But at the same time, Mike, I could see why they make the move just to add that on there. I certainly can. You know, I you know, I, I don't look at Seattle and go, whoa, this is crazy. It's just stupid. It's a 72-year-old guy, right? He talked about they're looking at the long haul. That's what they're looking at, the vision there. They've missed the playoffs two out of three years. They look like they're going to be in the market for a quarterback here, maybe a young one. So maybe they want a blank canvas to kind of go, hey, the shelf life of this team, Jamal Adams, year later, Bobby Wagner is coming to the end. Quandre Diggs isn't the same, right? I think it's coming to an end a little bit. So maybe they're looking at it like, let's give a, a blank canvas to the next head coach and, and see where we can go from there. Now, one thought about Pete Carroll measuring his words, because I just pick up there's a little there like he's going to find out. Like I, He's not going to fight with the guy publicly. One of the things that we need to understand about coaches who are relieved of their duties with time left on their contracts, there are clauses in those contracts that prevent you from saying anything disparaging about the team or any of its employees if you want to get that money. So, you know, it isn't until that last dollar is spent that a lot of times you start hearing the truth about what happened, yeah. whether through on-the-record comments or or Sunday splash reports. But, you know, people have asked me, well, you know, when, when are we going to hear what really happened in Carolina with Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud? And the answer is after the buyouts expire for Frank Reich and Scott Fitterer and Josh McCown and everybody else who doesn't want to screw up their money by talking, creating a digital trail of – talking to reporters about this out of the other thing. So th there's a reason for Pete Carroll to, to not go all in and vent and complain. And it's a bad look too, if he does that. I mean, there's a point where any favorable public opinion in his direction would go South. If he came off as a grumpy complaining old man standing up there, when he always paints a picture of a guy who's energetic, he's ready to go. He's positive. It's not his way to be negative. He's always positive. So, Here's the thing I'm positive about after what happened yesterday. That team isn't going to be sold anytime soon. Yeah, I thought I they you. would just stick with the status quo until they sell the team to Jeff Bezos or whoever. The team is going to be sold at some point. It's one of the requirements of the Paul Allen estate plan. But there isn't a specific time by which Jody Allen has to do it. And because the money is going to charitable endeavors – it's not like there's anyone pounding the table saying, sell the team, I want my money. Sell the team, I want my money. So she's in a great spot here. And she seems to enjoy operating and owning the Seattle Seahawks. And, and oh, by the way, the longer she holds it, the value is just going to keep going up and up <laughs> right, and up. Right. Whoever's getting that money is going to get a hell of a lot more of it five years from now than they would get right now. So this is a great situation to be in. And firing Pete Carroll or whatever they call it, and whatever he calls it, and moving forward, John Schneider hiring the replacement, that tells me that that she's not selling anytime soon because good luck hiring a coach who's going to get Ron rivera because it happened to him in Carolina. It happened to him in Washington. You're going along, you're going along, you're going along. Oh, new owner? Well, just a matter of time before new owner hires his or her own coach. And, and so... I think, you know, if you're a Seahawks fan and you've been worrying about the turmoil, the upheaval, the uncertainty of a new owner, I feel like that is pushed even farther into the future with yesterday's development. Yeah, I, I, definitely. I, I mean, I saw you wrote that article. You know, again, I'm, I'm so football sometimes. Some of those things aren't on my radar to the same way or, or the way they are in, in your capacity. I mean, you're all over that stuff. But, yeah, I would think by these type of moves and where we're at, I mean – yeah, it doesn't seem like anything like that's in the in the near future. Uh, and and listen, Jody Allen, you know, I don't I don't know what the all the details of are that arrangement too. But damn, I know NFL NFL organizations are are cash cows right now. I mean, they're all pocketing over four hundred million a year right now. When it's all said and done, bills all paid, all of that. So. You know, I don't know where that money's going. I didn't go into charity, I don't think. But uh, for right now, it seems like, hey, John Schneider is going to run the ship, and it doesn't seem like anything's changing there in Seattle anytime soon other than, you know, a new head coach and a new look for what we see on the football field and, and the organization. And apart from the profit that is being generated each and every year, even if you're trying not to make money, you're still making money with that giant check that you get your share of the national TV revenue – 
the value keeps going up yeah, and up right. and up. Last year, 2022 Broncos, $4.65 billion. A year later, Commanders, $6.05 billion. What would the Seahawks get this year? Eight? Right? Somebody told me five years ago the basic average value of the you know, normal middle of the pack NFL team is going to be eight to ten billion before too long. And we may already be there. The question is getting enough people who can afford it. But, you know, remember when there was all the speculation about Jeff Bezos trying to buy the commanders? It dawned on me at some point, if you're going to eventually buy a team, why are you going to buy a team that you got to spend all this time and effort, you know, getting rid of the crappy stadium, rebuilding and undoing all the damage that was done by Dan Snyder? You know, is, is do they have the right name? Do we need to change to a different name? Like, the hell with that. I'll buy a team that doesn't have any of those issues. It has a loyal, engaged fan base that loves the team, that supports the team. Got a stadium that isn't brand new, but it's new enough. Got a great tradition, great culture, great city, all that, you know. So if I'm going to plunk down multiple billions for an NFL team, I'll just wait for the Seahawks because we know at some point they're going to be available. Now, when, again, today, yesterday, we look at it, we say, Probably going to be a while now. It's probably going to be a while. And it'll probably be $10 billion by the time. The over-under for the price of the Seahawks when it's finally sold is $10 billion, and I'm going to take the over. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll hold you to that, uh, guys. Make sure we recorded that and we can alive. play that. Uh, yeah. I'm still alive. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see where it goes. But crazy. And, and the Texans crazy. definitely will make the playoffs. The Texans <laughs> definitely will make the playoffs. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> so um, how attractive of a job is this? It, if if you're you know you're gonna you're gonna be working for John Schneider apparently yeah, it's not yeah. like they're throwing him overboard and just right. throwing Bill Belichick or anyone else the keys right but how attractive is this job uh, it, it's I I want to say it's you know, the things you just laid out right the city the fan base the stadium the facilities all of that 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 it's like you just said it's it's top notch so like a coach is gonna love to go there and be a part of that environment. Right, they love their Seahawks. They love their their football, the home of the twelfth man, right in the NFL, at least that version of it. Uh, so that's where it's great. Now the team itself, yeah, I think is in a little bit of a limbo state, right? It's an offensive line that's not very good. There are some young guys there that you know it look like they have some potential to grow into something, right? The wide receivers, you got DK Metcalf and Lockett. Metcalf certainly has a bunch of years left in front of him. Lockett is kind of like maybe you know at the plateau part of his career, right? I don't think it's going to continue to go up, but might stay where it's kind of been here for a few more years before it falls down. Defensive line, some good, but no marquee players there. That's been an issue for them the last few years. They have not been able to kind of hit on draft or free agent difference-making defensive linemen. Right, we talked about the Jamal Adams thing. That's over. We know that. You know, safety Quandre Diggs did not have a very good year. We'll see where that goes. They got two studs at corner, so they're kind of a team that I would say is like middle of the pack as far as you know work to be done to fix your football team. It's not like it needs a total rehaul, but there's some certain positions that certainly need some upgrading and and some finishing touches on. And of course, then you drop, add in the quarterback conversation. And that we got Geno Smith and Drew Locke and nothing really that our fan base is going to get behind and go, ooh, look at the future, that's bright. I think that's probably the biggest thing that you know is a detractor or, or, or the question mark about where they're going in the future. Well, and who the coach is going to be yeah. really will influence a lot of those decisions. Definitely. The Geno Smith contract can be ripped up at any time. Mm -hmm. And again, how much power John Schneider has – Number one, the specific limits of that authority currently unknown. But, you know, if he's telling prospective coaches, Gino's the guy, we're sticking with Gino, that that may cause certain coaches to not be interested. And it it makes the search go in a certain direction where it's not going to be an established coach. It's going to be a rising coordinator. And one of the things that scouts do they scout players and they scout coaches and every GM once the GM gets that job has a list that has been carefully compiled over the years of the coaches that person would want to hire 
And now that John Schneider, after all these years of a highly respected executive who's been basically riding the sidecar next to Pete Carroll, doing a great job helping Pete Carroll, but it's been Pete Carroll's show. Yeah. Now this John Schneider's show, he knows. He knows. You know, do I bring back Dave Canales, who was the quarterback's coach with Geno and is the offensive coordinator of the Buccaneers? Do I bring him back to be the head coach? So we always see teams do the exact opposite of who they just had as a coach. So you look at older, tenured, longtime head coach who arrived with a lot of head coaching experience. Maybe this time they pivot back to someone that John Schneider has a pretty damn good idea is ready to step up and be a head coach, even if he's never been a head coach before. We know the risk of that, though. You don't know whether or not that person's ready to step up until they do. But that could be what happens because it's the exact opposite of what Pete Carroll was. But I hear you. They've got money to burn. Yeah, right. They, they, can, they can attract anyone they want. The question is, who do they want? This isn't as much who wants them as much as who do they want. Yeah, I, I, time will tell. We'll see. Yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of moving parts here. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, what John Schneider prioritizes, right? He's had Pete Carroll, and, of course, that's been the boss. And it's been all about the defense and – Listen, that, that's probably part of the reason we are here, too, right? One of the things I haven't hit on with my points here is just, hey, too, Pete Carroll is a defensive head coach, and their defense has stunk the last two years. I don't think that's helped his case either. You know, So the, the defensive coaching staff, I would imagine that's going to be revamped and totally new. I don't imagine them keeping that crew there with the way they've played on that side of the ball here as of late. Uh, but – yeah, I hear you. I'm going to be interested to see where it goes to. Does John Schneider want something totally fresh and new and get outside of all the coaches that we've had here and we need a new look and a new vibe and I don't want anybody that's been here in the past and part of Pete Carroll? Or does he kind of try to stay, like you're saying, kind of along those lines of guys that maybe have been there or you know, does he go the defensive coach route and try to stay with a similar formula that, that created the Legion of Boom and got them to the promised land the first time around? We'll see where it goes uh yeah it could go a lot of different ways here all these openings all these coaches uh I, it, it is crazy I mean we're gonna have a lot to talk about uh, leading up into the Super Bowl till after the Super Bowl well and and that's the other side of it too it's impossible to prioritize your potential candidates that you're gonna hire when there may be other current coaches who get thrust into the mix I'd have to go track the common biographies of John Schneider and Mike McCarthy. I assume they were both together in Green Bay at some yeah, point. Yeah, I believe they were. Yeah. Well, if my, what if Mike McCarthy becomes available? I don't know anything about the Schneider-McCarthy relationship. Sometimes I mean, we just assume that because guys work together in the past, they're always going to want to work together in the future. Sometimes they want nothing to do with each other <laughs> yeah, in the right. future. But there's other, there's other shoes to fall before we truly know the full universe of the potential candidates to be coaches at, at all these openings hi it's mike florio thanks for watching pft on youtube hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from pro football talk